I do apologize for the lateness of this video for anybody that is a fan of The Magicians, but it takes me a while to get to this shit. I'm a busy guy. I've got a lot of other videos to do. I got a lot of other projects that I'm working on. I also work full time. So I just, it sometimes takes me a while before a show that I really like gets put up in the cycle of reviews. But now I have finally caught up on season three of The Magicians and I am ready to talk about it. And that is a mild spoiler warning. I'm not going to spoil everything just in case there are a few people who are a little bit late to the party on The Magicians just like me. But there definitely will be some spoiler. I feel like I can't talk about the season without there being some some spoilers. Again, you have been warned, and now I get to talk about season three, which I truly believe is the best season of The Magicians yet. My favorite thing about The Magicians for years now has been that it takes magic, and it takes mystery, and it takes fantasy, and it wraps it all up, and it packages it in an adult world. An adult setting with characters that are relatable, who, uh, yeah, they're magicians, and they have powers and stuff, but they also are relatable people, and you can understand some of the struggles that they go through that have nothing to do with magic. At the end of season two, our heroes killed a god, a literal god and there are consequences to killing a god in the magician's universe. Killing a god led to magic itself being shut down. There's like no magic anywhere. Nobody has it except Julia. We'll get to her in a second. This season is really about the journey back to magic. It's about all the characters first dealing with the repercussions of not having magic. And then they have to try to figure out a way to get magic back. The only way that they're going to get magic back is by going on a quest. Yes, a quest. And it sounds kind of corny and cheesy, especially when they say it. But then when you watch the season and you go through the journey with them, you understand, oh no, yeah, this definitely is a quest. And each character has an important role to play in that quest. There's a story that says that if you get seven keys of magic, they will unlock some door to magic at the end of the world and that will help you get magic back. Quentin this season, I feel like he's the one character that was like 110% focused on getting magic back. Every other character, I mean, yeah, they want to get magic back and they're focused on it, but they got a lot of other shit that pops up that distracts them along the way that they have to deal with while also trying to get magic. And so I feel like Quentin was just like tunnel vision. I feel like he was just like, yeah, I, I have to get magic back. In that sense, it was kind of disappointing when I look at his storyline this season. It didn't really challenge the character in any meaningful or insightful way. There's a little thing at the beginning of the season that deals with him trying to get Alice back and he's with her when her father gets killed by something that she made an enemy of when she was a Niffin. Towards the end of the season, there's like a small thing that pops up with his dad where if they get magic back, his dad might actually die because cancer was in remission when magic was gone. And if magic comes back, then his dad basically dies. Outside of that, I didn't really feel like Quentin had much to do this season besides reacting to things that other characters were doing. The best episode that he was in all season long was the episode where he and Elliot are trying to find the clue to one of these keys and they somehow accidentally get stuck in the past. I'm not talking about like 10, 15 minutes I'm talking about years, years, years ago in the past. They get stuck in Fillory and they have to try to figure out this clue and then they end up getting old and they end up growing old together. It was a really funny episode. It was a really beautiful and touching episode that also once again continued to flesh out the great bromance slash occasional romance between Elliot and Quentin. Speaking of Elliot, he and Margot functioned this season just like they functioned last season as the high king and queen of Fillory. So not only do these guys have to try to figure out how to run a magical country as king and queen without magic, but they also have to try to help Quentin and Alice and whoever else is on his quest to help get magic back. It's always funny to see Elliot and Margot and see how much they've changed since season one. I mean, season one, they even reference it in this season. And that's another thing I love about this show is it's very self-referential, very aware of itself. It doesn't always take itself so seriously. There's a lot of meta humor that's there scattered throughout. There's one episode where Elliot and Margot are talking about all the shit they have to deal with and then they're just kind of like, Damn, we used to be the fun bitches at the club. What happened? And then Elliot is just kind of like, yeah, we were, and then we got character and depth. Moments like that are why I love Elliot and Margot. In this season specifically, I would say Margot has more to do than Elliot. Not to say that Elliot doesn't have a story whatsoever. One of the biggest revelations of the season is finding out that the child that he had with Finn, who they thought the fairies raised and brought back to their world, is actually not their kid. Yeah, it turns out Finn's baby died in the fairy world and that the girl they brought back was only there as a spy, I guess. She was a spy for the fairies. That's kind of messed up that Elliot, he wasn't a father and he didn't want to be a father first but then he was forced to be a father and he actually kind of was enjoying it for a second and then you find out that no you and Finn are not parents. As far as Margot goes as High Queen she had a lot to juggle this season. She actually gets her eye back at the end of the season due to some events that happened with her and the fairies which basically means that she has supervision now I think. I think she's got x-ray fairy vision. I don't know she just she has a fairy eye. They didn't give her her eye back they gave her a fairy eye which 
That could come in handy in the future, I would assume. Margot once again shows how sexy and badass that she can be as a character. She has to make a lot of tough decisions this season as well. And she does it all with her trademark style and wit, and you just love her for it. You just can't help it. You love Margot. Elliot and Margot get kicked off their thrones because, you know, fairies and they're manipulating people. And then there's this one little bitch who was their assistant who apparently is now the ruler of Fillory. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to forget his name. He was just kind of that smarmy dude who tried to follow their orders, but secretly he hated them, and you could tell he hated them. But Elliot and Margot get kicked off their throne and they're sentenced to their deaths but they don't actually die because the rest of their friends help them because they get a key. Bottom line is they lose their throne and then Elliot has to go into an election against this guy and then Elliot loses the election but then so does he. And who is there to pick up the pieces? Margo. Margo gets named High King of Fillory. It makes me a little bit curious though about Elliot's role going forward in Fillory. It's kind of like, is he like the chief of staff? Is he the speaker of the house? How does this work? I'm assuming that he gets whatever title that Margo wants him to get. Point is, he just can't be king anymore, which, you know, that sucks because Elliot and Margo, they didn't even want the throne at first. Now you can tell that after all this time of them bitching about being king and queen of Fillory that they actually really like being king and queen of Fillory and they take that responsibility shit serious. One of the characters who has improved the most since season one is Julia, and Julia is kind of low-key. Nah, she's really high-key the MVP of season three. Well, magic's gone. You find out that Julia's really the only person that actually has magic because she has a spark inside of her that grows because a goddess basically left it there because Julia was impregnated by a god in the previous season. I think it was season two. I'm pretty sure it was season two. The point is, Reynard, which, by the way, he has a cameo in this season, and it is a really interesting episode. Julia is left with this spark given to her by this goddess and it grows and it grows until she basically becomes a goddess at the end of the season herself. She, for most of the season, is the character that can use magic before anybody else. She helps the rest of the characters get out of a lot of really tough situations. As far as Alice goes, I have affectionately called her Hermione with a big rack in the past and she is that still. She's still fine as hell. But in this season, she goes from wanting magic and desperately wanting to be a Niffin again to all of a sudden dealing with the consequences of being a Niffin because some Something that she pissed off when she was a Niffin came back to bite her. And literally, when I say that, I mean it came back to kill her father. But after that, you definitely see that she's afraid to be tempted by magic. She's afraid of the influence of magic. She doesn't want to deal with the pain that magic can cause anymore. She tried to end magic forever. Like, she tried to destroy the keys. Fortunately, the library and fog show up. And this is where things get kind of weird because they use a siphon that I didn't know that they had. So basically, magic is back now, but the library controls its use and it controls how much people people can get. Alice is kept prisoner in the library because she made a deal with the library to siphon off Julia's power, but she never did. So the library took that as, okay, you double crossed us. You're gonna have to stay with us for the rest of your life. Now go ahead and ask Penny, see how much that shit works out for people. Fog used the potion that she was gonna use on herself because she didn't want to remember her portrayal. He uses it instead on the rest of the magicians. Quentin and Julia and Penny, or at least Penny from the other timeline, and Elliot and Margo have no idea that they're magicians. They don't even remember magic. Season one, season two, season three, they all follow a pattern at this point. That pattern will be that everything will be a hundred times worse at the end of the season than it was at the beginning of the season. Even if all the characters go through through their journeys and they accomplish their mission, they accomplish getting magic back. It comes at a cost, and I guess that's the big overarching theme of the magician. Even though magic can help you out of a lot of tough situations, it can also cause a lot of tough situations. Even though you have magic, ultimately you might still end up in a really shitty place just because. It's like the end of season one and season two, season three left me with more questions than answers. And I gotta say, honestly, that's a good thing because it makes me intrigued and it makes me more excited for season four. I don't think that they nailed everything the way that they wanted to in the finale. There are some convoluted explanations. I also think that Quentin and Elliot's storylines were kind of subdued this season. Magicians also does have a problem that sometimes pops up when they try to use visual effects that go beyond their budget. But overall, I think that this was the most compelling season of The Magicians yet. I really love the way it ended and I'm excited for more. I really love season three of The Magicians and I'm going to give it a solid four out of five supers. Those are my thoughts on season three of The Magicians. The finale was a few months ago so again I'm sorry that I'm late. What were your thoughts on season three of The Magicians and what are your theories going into season four? Keep in mind I don't read the books so educate me in the comment section if you want to. Please like and subscribe to the Super Fan Show and as always if you like what you see tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace!